art has always played a big part in my life and I really contemplate this question a lot because uh, I actually don't know the answer to it. It was a, uh, I was never taken to an art gallery as a child, but I always drew and I always gravitated towards looking at pictures. In hindsight, the pleasure or the joy of actually walking into an artist's studio and seeing the creativity, but all of the smells that go with it, the smells of oil paint, it, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's that, that from the very first time I, I went into an artist's studio has stayed with me all my life. The project began with the death of Brett Whiteley and uh, it was uh, a situation that I was frustrated, upset that I hadn't taken the opportunity and try to make a work of someone that I really admired. The project encompasses other people apart from artists um, because I'd, I'd been listening to a radio program where I heard Brian Sherman speak uh, on his philanthropy and as soon as I heard him talk and I heard the passion that he spoke with, I thought this is a perfect mix. I chose to do a portrait of Edmund Capon because um, he was nearing the end of his tenure at Art Gallery of New South Wales. I thought like this is a perfect opportunity to get someone that's been you know, incredibly important to uh, the Australian art scene. And I was after a more powerful image. Every, every image that I'd ever seen of Edmund was a laughing, smiling, jovial presentation to the camera. I was after something deeper. The most important thing for me about a portrait is the subject. Uh, I'm not interested in backgrounds uh, or environment. I'm, I'm only interested in uh, the, the life that's in the face, in the roadmap, their history. Kevin Connor's portrait is really about the light. Um, and had the most wonderful face and the textured hair and beard was fantastic. Just actually a really simple lighting approach. Peter Kingston was initially reluctant to actually sit for the portrait. Um, uh, I went to meet with him and we had a talk and as soon as I walked into his studio it made me smile. So in this instance I decided to utilise the background just be because of the, the humour of it. I was luckily presented with um, James Gleason's palette. I did uh, an image of that and that led to do uh, Russell Drysdale's hat and a whole series of other objects. The most important image for me uh, in the ephemera series is the Brett Whiteley chair. As soon as I walked into the studio and, and saw that, it was the, the one piece that I desperately wanted. Uh, it's featured in a lot of his painting and kindly Wendy Whiteley sort of gave permission for me to do that. So in essence, the, the project sort of came full circle. Every image I create begins with a drawing. I'll jot down notes, I'll sketch the concept that I'm trying to achieve. And in, in actual fact, I find that a lot of the time in, in, in drawing out the image, I'll sort of make corrections at that point um, so that when I go to meet the subject or to create the portrait, um, I have a completely clear vision of the image that I'm going to try to achieve. the uh, Dill Catherine Barton image. Um, I, it was an image that I'd struggled with um, uh, quite a bit until I heard her speak on the ABC about her childhood anxiety. And, and at that point, it, it resolved itself where I had Dill clutching a, uh, one of her drawing books to her chest uh, because drawing had become her solace as a, as a child. Mm -hmm. 
I don't see the project ending. I think uh, I'm, I'm sort of always inspired when I see new exhibitions and new artists. So for me, I'll continue on. And, and actually with the ephemera as well, it's sort of like it's quite um, almost an archaeological dig to keep going with something like that because you never know what you're going to uncover. <laughs>